Hi, I'm PJ. And I'm Thomas. And this is our renovation story. And I remember putting that tarp up. We were like up on the roof, like pouring rain, like so cold, like slipping, almost breaking our neck, like putting the tarp over. And I was like, this has to be rock bottom. We have been together for 13 years. We have been married for eight. Oh my gosh, eight. This year will be eight, right? I always let you answer this because I never know it's these eight. questions. It's, it's eight. It's eight. We met back in 2009 at a mutual friends get together. And then we reconnected a year later on Facebook. We just hit it off. We both grew up in the same small town. And so we bonded over that. We bonded over our love of homes and family. The rest is history. We have three children. Alan is seven, Zechariah is six, and then our daughter Ariana is five. We wanted to buy our home. I think the biggest reason is because it's the house that I grew up in. My mom and dad bought our house, I think in 1985. They renovated it themselves. When his mom and dad bought the house, there's a photo of his mom, Lila, standing out front with a yard sign. And so when we bought the house back, we kind of recreated that. Like he has his handprints in the pavement outside in the front. Mm -hmm. And so it's like him and his brother and his sister. And there's just so much history of his family like being here and they had the house and then went through tough times and lost the house and we were able to buy it back. Whenever we bought it, it was a complete wreck. The doors were all off the hinges. Like there was not a single window in the house that wasn't like busted out. It was a party house and it was destroyed. I will admit it was kind of sad to see like my childhood home in that state. I feel like we had like bright eyes of like, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna renovate it. We knew it was bad, but I don't think we knew that it was gonna get to the point where we ended up gutting everything. So we took it down to the studs. We redid all of the plumbing, the electrical, the insulation, the drywall, the molding, like everything. We have like the shell of the exterior of the house that's original and then everything else is basically new, but we knew that we wanted to try to keep the character and the history of it. Ultimately, I, I'm happy with how it turned yeah. out. We knew that we wanted to keep like the original charm and integrity. It's like our living room and our office, so not much has changed there. This is the very first room that you walk into at our house. It's also my favorite room. This is the room that I like to drink coffee in in the morning. Um, when we were renovating the house, we knew that we wanted to try to keep the original windows. So we kept all of the original windows. Some of the glass was broken. So we had to pull glass from like windows that we didn't use on the back of the house. It had the, the bookends and we knew that we wanted to keep them, but they were like painted in lead paint and were in really bad shape. So we had to replace them. This room is cozy. Yeah. I feel like it sets the tone for our house. Like it's like the old windows mixed with the old floors and just like the books. And it just kind of creates an atmosphere like as soon as you walk in the door. And then of course the hutch. This is our favorite piece that we have found. We found it at an estate sale. I think we both agree, right? You're like, this is definitely your oh, favorite definitely. piece. Oh, definitely. I love it. And uh, one thing that we display on this is things that we have found while we traveled. So we, We've found like different rocks and shells that we have brought home and we use it to display. Our kids have joined in on doing that. So our oldest son, this is the first thing that he's added to our collection. So whenever we first moved in, we use this as our living room, added the desk, which used to be our dining room table. Uh, but now it's our big nine foot table. This is where we do like the kids homework. This is where we do our emails and do our other work. It is nice because it is big enough so it can fit, you know, a couple people. We are always on the lookout for different art pieces. And so we found these on yard sales and Facebook marketplace and thrift stores and antique stores. And it's really neat once you get them all together. And, and Thomas, you did this wall. What I'll do is just like lay them out on the floor directly above the wall um, in the pattern that I want them to be. I don't like them to be perfect. I don't like them to be symmetrical. So we've made it to our laundry room. 
When we originally finished the house, we actually never finished this room. It was just a white room with a washer and dryer on this wall and then junk everywhere. We decided that we were gonna renovate it. So when picking the paint color, we had traveled to Amsterdam a few times and over there, there's this like dark moody green that you see on doors and like shutters and we fell in love with it. And so we tried to like get as close to that color as we could to, to paint the laundry room. And so we went with this dark moody green that kind of, you sometimes say it looks kind of blue, but. The name of the paint has green in it. What is it? That, Noct forest green? That one is nocturnal green. Oh, nocturnal green. And so we built the um, open shelving above the washer and the dryer. I added the cabinets on each side with the butcher block top. And then we just filled the upper portion of the wall with all kinds of different prints. You had the idea of using like art books mm -hmm. to, to frame. Yeah, well, that's something that I've been doing for like 10 plus years. A lot of these, like especially above the washer and dryer, are from like a study on Dutch oil paintings or something like that. It's a, a great way to get good art for relatively cheap. Growing up here, there's always so much that I wanted to do. And my extent, because I was only like 13, would just be like repainting every room. Like I probably painted every room three times. Growing up, like I, my family would come home and be like, oh my gosh. Or like I'd rearrange like rooms and they'd be like, Thomas did it again. So now we're standing in the dining room. There used to be French doors here mm -hmm. that separated the living room and the dining room. Um, those were not original to the house though. My mom and dad put those in in the 80s. PJ was like, no, those have to go and yeah, pick they, those out. They took up a lot of space because yeah. when they were open, they were in this room. So we wanted to get rid of it. And then I think this casement opening was a little bit smaller mm -hmm. originally because it had the door frame. So we, we widened the opening coming into this room, yeah. but then we matched it all the way down through. So this opening was not here originally. And so there was a small door here and that was closed off. So you couldn't see through the house. And one of the first things that I told Thomas was, I want to be able to see through the house whenever you walk into it. We actually spend a lot of time, we always do like family dinner mm -hmm. with the kids in here. And we do, we, we, we are one of those family that actually like uses their dining room. I know like dining rooms are becoming one of those rooms that are almost like obsolete. People usually have like eat at the kitchen island or like have a breakfast nook. We eat every night and every morning here. In these old craftsman homes, they were just like these skinny, very like um, steep stairs that would normally have just gone to an attic. Like they, back then, like they didn't really use um, the upstairs as like living space. It was mostly just for like storage and stuff. They still kind of felt like that whenever we bought the house back. We redid the staircase. We added a new newel post and opened up the, the bottom portion of the staircase and then closed off the rest. And I really love how that turned out. Mm -hmm. There was lots that we disagreed on when designing our home. Luckily, we had already went through one renovation and we learned a lot from that first one that we did together by the time that we got to this one. Do you, I remember what our biggest, we'll say discussion was. Of course, it was the light switches. <laughs> We got in this like humongous fight. Discussion. Discussion about the placement of the light switches in the dining room. Yeah. Who won? You win. Yeah. I never win, but this one I did win. Do you remember I wanted to paint the whole house white and PJ just kept being like, like that's not the house for this. Like it's a craftsman home. Like we want like warm earthy colors. And I'm so glad that you fought me on that. Basically, if you want to test your relationship, do a renovation together. That'll do it. Yes. We are now in the kitchen. This is the original kitchen in regards to where it is, was in the house. However, it looks nothing like it did whenever we bought the house. So before it was like this L-shaped kitchen that my parents did in the 80s. So there was like dark stained cabinets. They didn't go all the way to the ceiling. There was wallpaper, laminate countertops. And then like a built-in desk that every kitchen like in the 80s and 90s had, you know, like it just fills up with stuff and piles of paper. And so PJ came up with the layout of the new kitchen, which is basically like an oversized galley kitchen. For the countertops, we used a granite counter. Um, we really wanted to use a soapstone, but the maintenance with soapstone is so hard. So we did granite, but we had it honed. Um, so it really gives the appearance of a soapstone countertop. 
I think when you hear granite, sometimes you think like your 2000s granite where it's like shiny and speckled and that's fine, but like it's not the look that we wanted for this house. And so granite is so durable though. Like I'll take a hot pan out of the oven and just set it right on the counter. Mm -hmm. Like there's no staining, like we spill our wine all the time. And I mean, not all the time. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> like spilling our wine all over the place. <laughs> It's when we happen to spill our wine sometimes, it doesn't stain and um, <laughs> you can like, they're so indestructible, like they can take anything and we love, we love them. So we did the farmhouse sink and we did the aged brass for the hardware. We did inset cabinets, which I really love. I feel like it gives it more age when you do mm -hmm. um, the cabinets inset um, on the stove wall. We did the hood and then underneath the, the cabinets on the stove wall, we did little drawers. Like on this side, we have all of our spices and they're right here beside the stove. And then we keep our measuring cups on that side. And it really is a practical, it's nice to have it right there while you're cooking. The Kitchen Island is a thrift store find that I DIY'd and, and redid. So it's got a metal base and then a, a nice thick butcher block top. Kitchen is something that it was a nod to the time that this was built. This is not necessarily like a kitchen that you would have seen in this house back in 1924, but like the finishes that we chose kind of borrow from different elements of the of the like 1920s and 30s um, to create kind of like a whole space that feels old, but um, is definitely like a very new kitchen. It's funny when we have people over at our house, instead of like sitting at the living room where there's tons of space or somewhere else, we always find ourselves with whoever we're with around the island. Uh -huh. um, and it's not that big of a kitchen, but I, I think it's just a, a welcoming space and no. it's fun to entertain in here. This is our living room. Originally, this was a small like back porch that had like a laundry room and a half bath in it. And it was like eaten up with termites. We knew that we were gonna have to tear it off. So when we tore it off, we decided that we were just gonna build an addition. So we ended up building a 16 by 24 foot addition. At the time, I think we were thinking it was gonna end up being used as like a sunroom, but over time it was a dining room and now it's been a living room for a while now. We ended up doing a bonus room above this living room and we later ended up having to add the beam that goes across this room. And at the time when we were doing this renovation, we really just wanted the room to be like open and have tall ceilings. And so we were really upset about having to put that beam in, but then we found a way to kind of incorporate it into the room. And then we added the faux beam going this way. And ultimately we were really happy with how it turned out. We knew that we were gonna renovate the second floor and that we wanted to add that it had two very small bedrooms and a really weird like bowling alley bathroom. And we knew that we wanted to renovate it, but by the time we got to it, the roof had been neglected so bad that we ended up having to rip off the entire second floor of the house. So like when we were standing on the first floor, you could look up and you saw clouds, like you saw the sky. Mm -hmm. We weren't planning on doing that. We were like, we can make, it work and you know we'll we'll make what's their work and then because we had to rip it off that means replacing everything so on top of like doing a whole addition on top of the house you have the additional cost so i mean that that jumped the the price of how much it was going to cost to renovate it yeah. up as well so that was a big one <laughs> <laughs> the day after we ripped off the whole like upper story and so like you could see the sky like pj mentioned like it started pouring we at the time were trying to save the original hardwood floors throughout the house and there was no roof and it rained for like a month our basement filled up with like four feet of water and the hardwood floors were covered like we were out here the day after the roof got taken off and we had bought like a 300 dollar tarp to cover the house so the tarp was on the roof but the staircase like the oh, opening oh, for the yeah. staircase was open still and so as it rained, the tarp started filling up like a pool um, in the staircase until it ripped and just flooded the whole house. That's what happened. It's like a water park it in our house. Awful. It was awful. so awful. A positive surprise was that we were able to save the hardwood floors. After we adopted the kids, our daughter had just a plain white room and we really wanted to do something for her that was special. And so we asked her what color she wanted her room to be and we gave her a complete room makeover. And so we painted her room like this 
nice, warm, moody pink. Two of the pieces that are in Anna's room, one being the day bed, was a DIY project. We found it online and uh, brought it home and redid it. And then another one was a, a hutch that honestly had been like left out in the weather. And when we first found it, it did not look like it was going to be able to be saved. But after a little bit of paint and a little bit of, of work to it, it actually turned out really cute. So we keep all of her like books and, and mm -hmm. knickknacks in there. Outside of her room, you can walk at the towards the end of the hall, and that is our guest room. So this is the bedroom at the front of the house. It gets the most beautiful blinding light first thing in the morning. It's such a fun bedroom. I love the slope of the ceilings, and it just feels like you're tucked away like a little attic. This was what was, well, not originally, but whenever I was living here, this was like a long, skinny, narrow bathroom. This is like a pattern. My mom went out of town and my dad renovated. <laughs> she was gone, so he found an opportunity, sound familiar? And he like ripped off the dormer, like the original 1924 dormer that was on the house, and he put in this like, awful dog house shaped dormer like my mom still talks about it to this day she's like it's so cringy like the whole neighborhood was talking about how bad it looked and it looked like that until we bought it back and then renovated it we obviously ripped the whole upstairs off of our house and redid everything up here so we use that opportunity to make a big bedroom it's like a dark green color and mm -hmm. it really because before it was just solid white it was fine but it was a very boring room before and thomas picked a paint color i left and came home and it was painted um, i added a little bit of uh, trim to the ceiling just to kind of change it up a bit i think we had most of the furniture a lot of the furniture pieces we found at like estate sales i really like how it came together it's definitely a, we wanted the room to be like if somebody were to come over to our house and spend the night that they go in there and they can just like fall asleep and it's mm -hmm. so like dark and moody i feel like it's a room that could handle being so dark this is the upstairs bath we call it the kids bathroom but it's also just the bathroom like if guests come over this is the one that they use so it's it's nice that it's such a large space. It's actually one of the largest rooms in our home. Whenever we were renovating this house, we fell in love with the idea of turning like an old bedroom into like a bathroom. So we wanted the floor to kind of look like a slate tile, but we went with the ceramic just for durability and maintenance. So it was the closest tile that we could find that kind of looked and resembled slate. This room is also painted white dove, our favorite white paint. It's not stark, it's not yellow, it's like just this perfect middle ground mm -hmm. and it just like highlights every room. Anytime someone asks us like, what color white should I do? Our first thing is like always white dove. We went with, we tried to choose like more time period appropriate lights. So we have like the schoolhouse lights, the pendants in here, and then um, the sconces above the sink. So I'm always inspired by that before and after. I love like taking something that has just been let go and really putting like time and, and, and love into that, whether it's like a piece of furniture or a living room or an entire house. I've only not lived in this house eight years of my whole life. And so I'm happy to be raising our kids in the same house that I was raised in. When people walk through our front door, I hope that they feel comfortable and cozy and just warm and like that this is, a safe space and they just feel um, welcomed and accepted here.